Hi, I'm Zephyr, and today I'm grateful for a really sunny day. So sunny that I have to squint to look at the camera right now. Today I'm going to talk about reading a map and compass. So this is my compass. It has a fold. When you see a compass with a mirror like this, this is a signal mirror. Don't worry about that when it comes to compass use. But there are several primary parts to a compass. The first part is the dial. So this part right here turns. You'll notice that it has a set of needles right here that when I turn the dial, those needles don't turn. And that's the part that actually points to north and south, or magnetic north, and I suppose in reverse magnetic south. There's a difference between magnetic north and true north, and we'll get that uh, difference in a little bit. So this compass also has something called a viewfinder right here. So when you are orienteering, you might put the viewfinder up like this. Once you have a bearing set, which we'll talk about what a bearing is, you use that viewfinder to get a straight look at uh, whatever is directly in your path so that you're not veering off of your bearing. You'll also find that most compasses have a ruler. Uh, this one is inches and it kind of makes an assumption about the scale on maps and this one is in points of a mile, but uh, that is going to depend on the map. But You've got a ruler, and this is really useful for figuring out scale on a map, which we're going to talk about when we get to maps. Lastly, you'll see this little box. This red box I will often refer to as a shed. That is how I learned it, because Red Fred, the red needle, goes in his shed when you're setting a bearing. So let's say that my bearing was that. As long as Red Fred, the red needle, is in his shed, the box, then my bearing is correct and my compass is pointed in the direction I want to go. Those are the parts of a compass. So now let's talk about a map. So this map is of a portion of the White Mountain Range in the Northeast United States. It is an astounding national park and beautiful land and a map like this is critical to navigating it. But as you can probably see, there's a lot of information on a map. So let's talk about, firstly, the key. So this is the key. It is also sometimes called a legend. This is all of the most relevant information for what the map is going to tell you. As you can see right here, we've got the scale. We've got a miles scale and a kilometer scale. That is the distance represented on this map. So this much distance on the scale, on the key, is going to tell you how far that is on the rest of the map. It also has key landmark markers. So right here, I'm being told what a ranger station looks like, what a campground looks like, what a shelter and campsite looks like, etc., etc. All that information is super critical to learning how to read this map. This also tells me what different parts of trails are. Part of the Appalachian Trail, a massive trail that runs through most of the Eastern United States, is through the White Mountains. So this marks which parts of this map are part of the Appalachian Trail. It also marks what trails are spur trails, meaning they don't uh, have a circle back loop, they just sort of end. Which trails are just a normal trail, multi-use trails, meaning mountain biking and other sorts of functionality. This is really helpful for reading the map and you're gonna probably have a hard time without it. So that is the key. Now to look at this map further, I'm going to go to the other side, the smaller section. So this right here is Franconia Notch State Park, which is a part of the White Mountains. I have visited this area myself, and it's a beautiful region. And there's still a lot of information on this small map, so let's break it down. A lot of this stuff is going to seem pretty straightforward. You've got labels for specific trails, such as the Flume Trail, uh, Flume Slide Trail, Mount Flume, Mount Liberty, you know, the mountains are going to be marked, specific trails are going to be marked. Then there's all these numbers. So 2.5, 0 0.8, that tells you how many miles each section of trail is, and that's going to measure from each fork to the next. So from this fork right here to this fork right here is 2.5 miles. That doesn't mean that's the extent of the trail, that's just the extent of that stretch of the trail. Other information includes, it's going to mark bodies of water. So mostly that's going to be rivers, maybe some ponds, some streams. Uh, not all of the bodies of water are exactly to scale. This stream may not take up the exact amount of space that it says on the trail, partially because bodies of water shift throughout the year 
and partially because to make things visible, sometimes they aren't to scale. But at the very least, you can be sure that when you come to this point in the trail, you're gonna come across White House Brook. Additionally, maps have lines. They have these elevation lines or contour lines. What these lines tell you is how steep and how high something is. So generally on a map, each line is approximately 100 feet of elevation. You can usually tell if that's different based on whether or not it says. So right here, it says 2,500 to this line of contour, 3,000 to this line of contour, which tells me that if I just count the lines in between, yep, it's 100 lines of elevation between each contour line. These contour lines don't just tell you how high a mountain or hill or whatever is, it also tells you how steep. For instance, if we look right here, this region right here, yes, there's elevation, but it's not insanely steep. I could, I could definitely climb that and I'm not always in the best shape. But if we look over here to Mount Liberty, it gets, the lines get much closer together, telling you that it's much steeper. The elevation is happening much faster. That contour line information is critical also for finding landmarks because if you're in a portion that's supposed to be super steep and it's a very gradual incline, you know you're probably not where you mean to be and vice versa. So that is how contour lines work. Now let's talk about using a map and a compass together. So I mentioned that there is a difference between true north and magnetic north. On a compass, the only thing that you will be able to find is magnetic north. Now in some regions, magnetic north is extremely similar to true north by a matter of degrees. In other regions, it's quite a bit further off. And this is because magnetic north has to do with where there is a magnetic pole on this needle, which doesn't exactly line up with the exact north pole. However, most maps do line up with the North Pole. Now, some maps will tell you what the degree difference is between Magnetic North and True North. This map does. It tells us that True North is 15 degrees east of Magnetic North. So, <clears throat> well, this won't be totally accurate because I'm not in the exact same place that this map represents. I'm gonna follow that line of thinking. So, if Magnetic North is 16 degrees west of True North, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the dial to compensate 16 degrees east. And that dial is marked, usually each, each line is two degrees, though that might change, so check the compass. Now the dial has been turned 16 degrees east of Magnetic North. So, with my compass, straight up and down with the map. I can just turn my map and now my map is oriented. Now the way the map is facing right here is the exact same way that the world is facing around it. This is really useful for simply trying to get your bearings. However, sometimes you need to set a bearing. That is to say, you need to find a direction to go from one point to the next. So let's talk about how to do that. Let's say I want to go from the Dry Brook to the Lafayette Campground right here. So that's these two spots. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my compass so that the sides touch both points. Then I'm gonna turn my dial so that the lines on the dial are straight up and down with the map. And then I'm going to account for magnetic north. And I'm gonna turn the dial an additional 16 degrees east. And now, as long as the red needle is inside the box, as long as red Fred is in his shed, the compass is facing the right direction. Should I be going from Dry Brook in order to get to Lafayette Campground? Now, when you're following trails, don't follow a compass bearing exactly and go off trail, follow the trail. But if you are off trail and you need to figure out how to get from one spot to the next, setting a bearing is gonna be key. And that is how you do it. And that's pretty much how to set a bearing on a map and compass. It's a little bit complicated and you'll need to practice it quite a few times and maybe review the information quite a few times. But those are the basics and I bet you can get it. Thanks for watching. Bye.